My name is James Riley Hill. I live in Rough and Ready, California. I enlisted in September of 1941, fresh out of high school, went to boot camp in San Diego, then aviation machinist made school in uh, Alameda. From there I was transferred to ZP-32 at Moffett Field. Now, did you start flying right away? Yes. As a mechanic? As a mechanic. My first airship flight was a TC-13 with Ernest J. Steffen as a, as a pilot. He was an ensign. Uh, we were armed with 250-pound uh, uh, depth charges. and On the TCs? On, right. on the TCs. Yes, there was, it was very definite that we should notify the home base. And some L ships. A few of the L ships that they had uh, purchased from Goodyear. Oh, you had armament on the L ship? We, we carried two, two um, depth charges on the L ship. Our biggest problem was separating the periscope wakes from the dorsal fins on the sharks. <laughs> Too many times we made a speed run on a shark and bombing techniques were very, very crude at that time. We, we thought the closer we got, uh, the better it would be when we dropped the uh, death charge. But uh, we realize now that uh, we should have been 500 feet in the air so it didn't blow that airship out of the water. <laughs> but we didn't kill any sharks either. Still in 42. August. Right? August. August of 42. You flew out of Treasure Island, didn't you? Yes, sir. Okay, so it was a Sunday, and uh, they had three people scheduled for the morning flight. Very unusual. Did you, had you ever flown with these guys before? Oh, certainly. One, I'd flown with uh, Cody, and uh, Cody <coughs> was ex-enlisted that had gone to prep school and then to the academy, and he was a great officer and gentleman. Adams was an ex-mechanic that had flown on the dirigibles on the Macon and the Akron and survived the crash on the Macon. He could have retired, he had enough time to retire, but the war was going on, so they said, we'll make you a temporary ensign, send you to maintenance officer school, and you can become a maintenance officer in one of these squadrons. This was an indoctrination flight for him because he had never flown a small airship. Yeah. Adams, I'd never met him before, but he's had 30 years of exemplary service and was well thought of as a crew member on the Macon. Had he known Cody before this? No. No. So they no, weren't that, that was their first meeting. I see. Face to face. Sitting in Treasure Island, in the bay, in the fog. Fog is water, water is weight. It made it very sluggish to take off with three. It just wasn't worth it. We didn't, there was no need to it. So after I'd gotten the airship ready to go, came off the mast and the, uh, pilot, uh, Lieutenant Cody, said, there's no need for you to go today. We're heavy. Everything's running fine. Fine. Or something. I got out and locked the door. They took off. Normal takeoff. Uh, what was the static condition of the ship at takeoff? Was she a little bit heavy? Probably 400 pounds heavy. So it was It was pretty critical that you get off then? Not it, really. It we, just, we, We've flown three, but it's, it's, it's not the normal practice. Like the book says on those Warner Scarab engines, take, go into full takeoff power, get to altitude, come back on it, lean them out, and get better miles per gallon, hours per gallon. But every hour, you've got to run those things into full rich and blow out the carbon. I'm sure they got to talking about life on the big ships, on the ridges. Cody was very interested in all facets of lighter than air. That's what I would have done. <laughs> I would have too. And I, after I found out who Adams was, I said, Dad, gum, I wish I'd have protested that. I'd like to have gone. And here's the story. I'm sure that they I got to talking and forgot to lean those engines, or forgot to clean them out. And they got away with it for the first two and a half hours. And then it carboned up and it quit. Both of them. We've been trained to free balloon in the case of a lost power. When an engine stop, 
my theory is that they said, oh, oh, we got problems. I remember now we've got to get out on the outrigger, pull those things through by hand and try to get that carbon out. And when he did, there was carbon loaded in the cylinder. And the pre-ignition. Pre-ignition whopped. Got him. The other guy's down there said, hey, I don't know how to run this thing. My buddy's in the water. He's not pulling his life jacket. I'm going to help him. Lord only knows how high he was. He might have been five, six hundred feet in the air by that time. They were outside the Golden Gate Bridge, oh, okay. between the Golden Gate Bridge and the Fairlawns. People said, that theory doesn't work because something would have turned up. Part of the life jacket, part of the shoes. I disagree. They're in very cold water, extreme riptides, and sharks galore. Yeah. Yeah. One, they should have sat down and had a cup of coffee let that carbon cool off. Two, pull the circuit breakers, turn off the ignition switches, send a base, send a message, tell them where they were, 14 miles from the fair lines, north, lost both engines. They could have done that. I didn't. No, that's Why didn't right. they drop one of the 250 pound death charges? Don't arm it, just drop that mile move. Right, for ballast. For ballast. And wait for the prevailing breeze to blow them back to San Francisco. I'm deeply regretful that I wasn't there because I feel certain with my training as a mechanic. You could probably save the ship? Yes, sir. Because well, we would have burned them out every hour. That ended the, the uh, airship operations at Treasure Island. Went back to Moffat, and several months later, I had applied for uh, naval aviation pilot training, enlisted, and was accepted, and went through pilot training at uh, Moffat and uh, at uh, Lakehurst, and graduated as an ensign. I graduated on 4 4 44. <laughs> so when you got down to Hitchcock, Hitchcock was pretty well established by that Oh, yes. Yeah. Then you went on to uh, Weeksville. Weeksville. Yes. And you flew out of Weeksville and changed everything. We were all assigned to various crews. You didn't have a particular ship, you just sort of. No. Yeah. Well, Not a particular ship, but a particular crew. Uh, from there, I was transferred to Moffat for my last tour of duty and retired in Moffat in 63. Uh, and lived, lived in Mountain View for about, about 20 years.